the handicap rugby chat that matters. And well, I just hope early signs aren't you know, of what we're experiencing on the show aren't what we can experience this year because I'm having all sorts of problems getting my guest on. I can see him fine. He can't see me very well, and there seems to be a big delay. So he's just popped out, and he's coming back. We're going to give it a go. If it doesn't work, I'm probably just going to have to run through the betting myself. In the meantime, welcome to the boys in the live chat. Missed all of you guys. Uh, good to have you back. Uh, Mark, I know you in, in Ireland at the moment, so at least you're watching us at a reasonable hour. And yes, rugby fan, happy New Year to all. Let's bring Pierre in and see if I can uh, see if we can pick it up. Pierre, can you hear me, mate? Yes, Brent. No, I, I can hear you. Um, as soon as it, it switched on to both of us on the screen, it started to, to sl start to slow down. But I'm um, happy to be back, and I hope everything's working well through the YouTube channel at least. And um, But, yeah, let's get going. Excellent. Well, that's about as promising as we've had it with the two of us in the last few minutes. So, first of all, welcome back to the show. Pierre, it's been a long time since you've been on. And uh, you made contact with me when you were out in South Africa a few weeks ago. It was great to catch up with you for a beer. And uh, looking forward to your views. You, you've been following the European Championship quite closely. Oh, it seems we've we've still got some technical problems here. Um Guys, I, uh, I'm just wondering, can you hear me okay? If I can ask the guys in the live chat just to just to comment, <laughs> looks like Henrik has, has put some weight on. I do like like that one. But it does appear as though we're bat bat uh, battling with that. Mark, can you hear me okay? Does it just appear we can't hear? Okay. So yeah, no, I have been. Uh, it was good to to meet up in, in South Africa finally after, after all of the years and um, – what we watched the Stormers and Glasgow, that disappointment together. Uh, but nonetheless, very good. And yeah, I've been following the, the European Cup quite closely. Um, obviously, living here, it, um, it's quite easy easy to catch the games, all of them live um, on the various channels. And um, yeah, excited for this last weekend's round of games, uh, but even more so for the Six Nations in a couple of weeks. Right, well... Let's get going. I think, unfortunately, there seems to be quite a delay, and I'll leave it to the guys in the live chat. If it becomes unbearable, yeah, it does sound like a bit of a delay. I don't know if it's going to work. And if so, unfortunately, I'll just have to run through on my own. But let's start off the first game, a Leon minus five, or minus, sorry, minus one and a half against the Bulls. Now, I actually made Leon plus 5.5 for this game when I looked at the handicap. Um, and the reason being, I'm not sure that Leon really fancy their chances of progressing through to the next round. The Bulls do have plenty to play for. If I looked at the log correctly, they just need a bonus point to qualify. So, uh, yeah, I think I think for me, um, the Bulls could be the business here. I had a look at the team selections this afternoon, and I'm certainly leaning towards the Bulls on the handicap. Pia, I'm going to try this once um, and, and see if you've caught up on the thing. Otherwise, we'll probably have to have to take a rain check because I think the guys will, will go mad with the, with the delay. Um, your opinions on the Bulls game? Uh, sorry, lads. Please just be patient for a sec. But uh... yeah, no, no. Thanks, Brent. So I'm sort of working it on the YouTube side, listening to you there and speaking uh, sorry, here. Lads, and um, but, uh... also, um, I've also had a look at the game. And for me, the 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 weather is going to be it's going to be a challenge. It's cold at the moment here. It's really cold. And the bulls on their social media, they had the photos of the snow and so on. So it will be a crisp zero tomorrow night. Um, Lyon is putting out a strong team as well. Um, so for me, Wayne Barnes riffing, um, this is unders. I haven't seen a line yet. And if pressed, I would go for that bet. Um, both teams uh, within seven. Um, that would be my, my go in this game. Right, that bet is available at Sunbet. Um, as I say, I'm leaning towards the Bulls here on the handicap. I think the, the Bulls uh, plus one and a half is my pick. I think they'll book their spot comfortably in the, in the last 16 of the tournament. Let's move on to the next game then. We've got Leicester minus ten and a half against the Ospreys. And uh, yeah, I had a look at this. I actually handicapped this game pretty close on this one. So it's, I'm not seeing a lot of value there. But if anything, I'm leaning towards the home team. Uh, Pierre, what are your views on this one? Yeah, no, I agree, and I think it's it's a lot the same for all of the games. Um, home home field advantage in this competition is going to be key. 
Um, the last 16 and, and quarterfinals are played in consecutive weekends. So for the top teams that really want to end in the in the top two to get that home quarterfinal as well. So um, I just see Leicester kicking on and, and doing the business and securing that um, second second spot. Excellent. Well, Stephen Marks in the live chat. Stephen, great to have you back for the new year as well. You like Leicester. So all three of us on Leicester there. So that certainly could be one that goes into the newsletter acca. So um, I'll, I'll bring up this uh, scroll that I normally have there. If you've not subscribed to our newsletter yet, we are going to be sending out the first one of the year uh, tomorrow. So there is a, a link down below and you can subscribe to that. Let's move on to the next game. Those are the two Friday night games. We now move on to Saturday's fixtures. We've got Northampton Saints plus 15 and a half against La Rochelle. Now, I think the handicap opened up plus 11 and a half here, if I'm not mistaken, Pierre. So a bit of money for, for La Rochelle, who um, obviously uh, uh, will be going through to the next round and, and might just be looking to to make a little bit of a statement. I just want to look at my notes here. Um, Northampton, of course, bottom of the log. They really only have a mathematical chance. And La Rochelle are qualified, but uh, might want to give themselves a, a chance of topping the group. Yeah, yeah, no, no, agree. So the same for them. They also have the home home field sort of advantage to play for. Um, Northampton, a little. Um, they can still qualify for this the second tier competition. So if you finish within the top ten. Uh, you can qualify. So there's a bit to play for for them. Um, with these French sides, you never know. They hate traveling. Um, you never know what type of La Rochelle will show up, um, if they're really going to go for it and, and, and cover the cap. So if pressed, I would maybe do a Northampton plus 16 and a half is a lot at home, um, but, but not confident at all. Right. So, I mean, there's so many games. We've got 12 matches this weekend, and that's excluding Challenge Cup. So it is a sort of weekend where you can pick and choose your battles. You don't have to go firing in there on, on, on every single game. And for me as well, uh, I, I'm leaning La Rochelle, and I agree, Mark, you got the minus 11 and a half. I certainly would have taken that as well. But at current lines, I, I may not get too involved there. Let's um, pop up and get the next game on. This is interesting. Harlequins minus three and a half against the Sharks. These sides, of course, played a very exciting fixture in Durban. I think it was 39-31 to the Sharks. Quinn's are seventh on the log. They need a win to guarantee qualification, and the Sharks are second and already qualified. Um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Pierre, the Sharks, if you know, if they, they they can still get a home quarterfinal, but after that, it's off to Europe, neutral venues for the semis, and then uh, the Aviva Stadium for the final. Yeah, so exactly. So they are they are in second ahead of Saris with eight um, point difference. So it's really in their hands if they if they're going to finish second in this group, thinking that Saracens are playing away to Edinburgh. Um, Exeter has got a chance to come in second as well. I think they've got quite an easy game against Cust, so they will they will be pumping. Um, but for me on this one, Harlequins was mighty impressive on Sunday night against Racing. They should have won that game. They they really let it slip um, there at the end. And I think they just have a bit of momentum with Marcus Smith back working well with Esther Eisen again and, and so on. Um, so for me, although the Sharks are sending a good team or a, a full strength team, um, I have to stick with the home team advantage and, and go Harlequins. Yeah, um, I, I was leaning towards Harlequins minus three and a half as well. They Mark just making the point in. No African teams could play at home in the semi, so that is a good point. And it also explains why the, the South African teams, I was just having a look at the betting. I mean, you can get 14 to 1 on the Sharks, the way they've been playing. That's pretty tempting, but I guess the reality is you know that they're going to be playing away for the semi finals and final, and that probably explains their price a bit. Good. Um, I'm not sure if we've lost you there. I'm just having a look. Stephen Marks and my pimpy suspended. Let's move on to the next game. Uh, Pierre, uh, after that uh, Harlequin Sharks, we're both united on Harlequins there. This is an interesting one. I think this is a very tough one to handicap Bordeaux against Gloucester. I actually initially thought Gloucester might start favourites on this. And, and just simply because Bordeaux 11th on the table, I thought might just throw in the towel. Okay, they are at home and French teams, uh, I suppose, will, will play a bit harder at home. Both of these teams could qualify, but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to be easy. I actually think Gloucester might be the value here, perhaps even on the board. What are your thoughts on this one, Pierre? Yeah, no, I think both of them have a really good shot, thinking that like racing is eighth 
and they play um, Leinster, um, and they play Leinster away. So they will get stuck on their five points, um, and then it is really the winner of these two, unless Leo tip, tip over the Bulls, but the winner of these two can sneak in on in eighth place. So there's a lot to play for. Um, initially, I also was thinking about Gloucester, but then Bordeaux sent a weekend team out last week. Um, they not going too badly in the top 14. And, and again, for me, in this competition, the home field advantage is, is so good. And even if you travel from the UK to, to Bordeaux, it takes a bit of time to get there. So um, I also um, I have to go with the Bordeaux, but it's going to be close. Um, the five points, I think, is set very well. Right, just want to comment on this, Mark Dumpf. You said Racing had 12 players and still won last week. And Mark, what, it, it was one of those weeks which I found very strange. There were teams like the Sharks who were, who were dominant against 15 men and then struggled to put 13 men away. It was a very strange weekend for me. And I was thinking of Henrik Swat. I know Henrik, we'll have him on the show again later in the uh, in the season, if I can put it that way. He's taking a bit of a break from rugby punting at the moment. But he was always the one who said uh, bookmakers overreact to the red cards. And he used to back the pluses straight away. So if he was punting last weekend, I think Henrik uh, would have done pretty well on that one. Let's move on to the next game then, Pierre. Um, I'm wearing the shirt. I'll just uh, show you guys there. Yeah. Uh, wearing the Leinster shirt. Um, by the way, Mark uh, Dumphy is actually coming out to South Africa in April. And we're going to go and catch a Bulls, uh, a Bulls Leinster game together. So mm -hmm. really looking forward. And I'm sure we'll link up with the likes of um, perhaps the conductor and, and, and guys like that too. We might go and watch that game. And, of course, I'll be wearing my, my lens to top proudly. This is a game where you've got to think, as you say, rushing in eighth, but do they really think they can beat Lens away or are they just going to almost throw in the towel? And I must admit, I'm leaning here towards Lens on the handicap. Yeah. No, I agree. It's so difficult to go against them. They have almost have two to three full squads that can take on any team. I saw the Irish team was just announced. And Henshaw is not in, so I'm not sure if he's fit or not, but if he's fit and he's not been included, um, there will be some some hell to pay on the pitch this weekend. Um, but for me as well, Leinster, you just cannot bet against them at home. And um, Racing, I think this tournament is is over for them. They have to go to the, to the second tier tournament um, for the knockout rounds. Yeah, I think we're aligned on that one as well. Very much in agreement. Henshaw injured there for, for Leinster. Um, let's go to a big handicap here. Yeah, we, we talked about it. First of all, just want to say Exeter last week, that try that got over 22 and a half points landed. It was a crucial bet for me. My year was starting to go downhill and downhill fast. And I took Exeter overs. And um, choo, I mean, it, it arrived in the last minute. I thought they were harshly done by with a red card. And uh, the way they celebrated there, you can see they're taking this tournament very seriously. They're playing against Cast who, as far as I can tell, are pretty much gone here. But yeah. gee, Pierre, this is a big handicap. Yeah, no, it's it's big. But as you say, Cast is gone. Um, they will shift focus back to the top fourteen. I can't. They can't even make the. Um, well, there's no chance of getting back into the top eight. They might sneak into tenth um, place, but even that will be a stretch for them. So. I really can't see them going there and really playing. And on the other side, Exeter, um, they will be jockeying for position to see how high they can get up to the log. Um, 27 is a lot of points, um, but but still, I would not be I would not like to be on the plus in this game. Yeah, that's, you get the feeling if you're on the plus that you'll be hanging on at the end, <laughs> just way praying for the game. Dead. I, I'm actually. If anything, I would be on the minus here, but gee, it is a, it is a big minus. Maybe I'll have a look at uh, points lines on the, this game. But that takes us to the next game then, and it, uh, it's the Stormers. Whoops, my keyboard's playing, uh, going up here. The Stormers up against Clermont. Now, I handicapped this game on the good for the game forum at about Stormers minus 22 and a half, and my assumption was that Clermont here are, are potentially going to send a B team out. The line opened up minus 11 and a half, and it's moved to 15 and a half where it appears to have stabilized. Storm is sitting fourth at the moment, and, and they should qualify even if they lose. But uh, they certainly just need a bonus point from what I can see to make it to the last 16. And Clermont are eighth, and if they lose, obviously very much at risk. What's your feeling on this? Are Clermont going to be taking this seriously, or can we expect a, 
sort of one of those away French performances where they they, they maybe contest for the first 15 minutes and then they disappear. I think it's going to be one of those away ones. They sack their coach in the week. Um, the new coach has been appointed. It was the old guy from Bordeaux. I think it's him that had a horrible time there. But he's only taking over on the 27th of, of January. So they're coming to South Africa without a coach. And um, I think the Stormers will be up for it. The incentive for them is really to, to stay in that top four, to get at least a home last 16. And um, for me, I can't, I can't see any other way than, than a comfortable Stormers win. So your initial cap for me is, is probably closer to what it should be um, with Clement coming. I mean, Clement last week, they were so disappointing against, um, who did they play? I have it here on my list. But at home, they, I think they got turned over at home last weekend. So um, not really. Uh, oh, against Leicester. Leicester okay. put 40 past them last weekend. So for me, no, they are gone. I think Storm is all the way in this game. Right. Let's um, let's move on to the next game then. And it's Ulster up against Sale. This one, I think I commented on the good for the game for a very tough game for me to handicap as well. I think you've got ninth and 10th on the table playing each other here. And, uh, you know, potential chances of qualifying, but... You know, what are the teams going to mean? I actually, I was leaning a little bit towards Sale because I haven't been that impressed with, with Ulster this season. So I was a little bit surprised. I, I actually priced Sale as slight favourites for this game. What are your views on this one? Yep. I, I think that's going to be a straight shootout for the eighth place in this group with Clement going to go down to the Stormers. So there will be a lot of lot to play for for both. I, I quite like Sale um what they're doing and i think they've been a bit unlucky in recent weeks so they should be coming nice and strong um i would take the away plus in this game as you say ulster has been disappointing in all competitions um last week's game included so um i would go sail on the plus here right sail on the plus here i'm with you relying on that one let's see i see a comment coming through also need a big one will happen this weekend so stephen uh, making sure we've got something to think about there. We're not 100% aligned on that game, although there's been quite a bit of alignment on, on some of the other games. Let's move on to the next one then. Montpellier minus 20.5 against uh, London Irish. And um, let's just see my notes on, well, I'll get your opinion on this and then I'll share my views on it. Uh, 20 and a half. I actually kept this 22 and a half, so it's very much where I kept it, Pierre. So not seeing massive value at this point. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I I also think it's it's a fair cap. I mean, London Irish were were terrible last week against the Stormers. The Stormers let it go in that second half. Um, I th I think it's over for Irish, and I would I would easily back Montpellier here. They they're down in seventh, so they can maybe move up a spot or two with a good win. So for me, um, Montpellier if if pressed to take a bet, but I think it's been very very well set. Yeah, pretty well said, but but I actually agree with you. The more I think about this game and the more I think the fact that Irish, they would need other results to go their way and a bonus point win to have any chance. So I think they might really throw in the Talia and then the French could but could potentially cut loose. Uh, let's go on to the next game, which is Toulouse against a Munster here. We've got Toulouse minus 14.5. Uh, just looking at this game. Whoops, let me just... My, my monitor, unfortunately, we're having all sorts of technical issues. My monitor not working. But to lose top of Group B, they've qualified already. Munster are sixth and likely to qualify even if they lose. Uh, what's your view on this one? 14.5. Yeah, so... I think it's uh, for me. This is the one for the weekend where the home team or the away team can get close. Um, I, not necessarily. I don't think they could they could turn over to lose, but um, Munster has been has been doing well um, in the last few weeks in all competitions. So I would be keen to be here on the Munster plus and for them to keep a tidy, maybe lose by by eight seven in that range. 
So for me, the Munster plus, and um, I don't think they can turn them over, but they will keep it close. Right, the final game. I don't, I don't have any firm view on that to lose game. I must say, but Edinburgh plus four and a half against Saracens. I thought the Saracens might start slightly bigger here, so I am leaning um, Saracens minus four and a half early days. Where are you going on this one, Pierre? Yeah. So, so for me, this one is the the game of the weekend. Really, it's nice. It's a Sunday. Don't bet on it, Derek Brent. But um, I think yeah, <laughs> take the overs. The weather is fine, and um, and then let it uh, let it run. I think Edinburgh has done well as well in the last few few rounds. They played okay. They played Cast last week. They won well. They did what they should have. Um, but um, I really think this is going to be a great game, um, great game to watch, high scoring. So um, I would, I would, uh, this would be the only game on, in the weekend I would comfortably say do an overs. Both teams are going to be in it. Right, excellent. Well, looking forward to all of those. Uh, a reminder that the newsletter is coming out uh, tomorrow morning. A uh, peer challenge cup. I'm, I'm not going to bring any betting up here because I think we've only got the betting on the Friday games. And I'm finding the Challenge Cup very difficult to bet on in the sense that the bookies are are trading very carefully with the Challenge Cup. They're sort of um, pricing up very late, things like points lines and that. And, and for me, there's enough uh, Champions Cup matches to keep me occupied. But does anything jump out for you on the Challenge Cup? Have you had a look at anything there? I've, I've not had a look at the lines, but the match that jumped out at me is obviously the teachers at home against Powers. So Powers had some difficulties. Also, I think a coach suspended um, and so on. And I think the teachers can still make it to the big round. So I would really think um, if you were to back the teachers at home on the weekend, there might be a good return. I'm not sure what the cap is, as, as you said, um, the bookies are waiting a bit for those. But I always think the cheetahs at home, um, they can go they can go hard. This this French side is at the bottom. They don't like to travel. They've got, they have some problems. It's sort of the, the Clermont of, of the Challenge Cup. So I would say if anything, watch it, enjoy it and, and punt the cheetahs. All right. Yeah, let's hope the cheetahs can come up with something there. Okay, we've reached the end of the show. Thanks for first of all to all the boys in the live chat for hanging in there with us. Uh, all the technical problems uh, it sounds uh, like my wife talking to me when she she talks to me and then i i don't process it straight away and i answer about uh, a few seconds later and, and that's what we had but pierre thanks very much you've also made uh, made uh, made the most of uh, you know recovering recovering the show there which i appreciate what is your best bet for the weekend or best bets for the weekend Well, I'm going to go the way I'm um, listening to your previews and your capping, and I'm going to go Storm is minus. Um, just as you've capped it on 22, there's quite some room there for all Clermont's difficulties for me to Storm is minus 15. Excellent. Uh, I think um, you and I united there. I don't want to give too much away for tomorrow morning's newsletter, but let's just say that Pierre and I very much united on that one. Thanks a lot to all the guys uh, for joining in the live chat. Thanks for your patience with the technical issues there. And Pierre, thanks a lot to you, man. Look forward to chatting to you again. Um, we'll find out between us what the issue was with the sound and get that right for next time. But great to have you back on the show and back into your rugby punting because I know you you took a little bit of a break for a while, but you, you're back and firing. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for being back. And yeah, we'll sort out these te technical gremlins. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. The Six Nations is coming. Get ready for that build up. We're going to start in earnest next week. Have a good one and enjoy the weekend. Cheers, guys.